In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, in his joy, he went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Or again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The pearl of great price is worth giving up everything for. What is that pearl? What is it that for which you're willing to sacrifice everything? One of our Boston seminarians has a most interesting story about his vocational discernment. He was attending a vocations retreat, and the priest there was preaching about the original call of Jesus to his apostles on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. He called it the world's shortest discernment. There they are fishing, Peter and Andrew, and Jesus comes up to them and says, Come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Then he turns to James and John and calls them, and immediately they leave their boats and their father and follow Jesus. Or Matthew is sitting at work doing his taxes thing, and Jesus says, follow me. Matthew quits his job on the spot, gets up and follows Jesus. They didn't spend years discerning, they simply heard a call and responded. So this seminarian decided to do the same. After that talk, he was in prayer and adoration, and he said to Jesus, I'm going to count to 10 and make a decision. If you're calling me, I'll go. So he counted to 10 and then decided then and there to follow Jesus and to enter seminary. We know that discerning a vocation is a big question, and so we don't want to make any mistakes, and we want to be certain, so we agonize and navel-gaze and deliberate our options for years and never make any moves. But in reality, responding to a vocation is as simple as perceiving and then pursuing. I may not hear God's voice clearly, 100% that I'm called to seminary or another vocation, but that voice only becomes louder and clearer if I start walking closer and follow the beginnings of that call. If I refuse to move, I will never gain clarity. Another reason we are slow to pull the trigger is if we're too comfortable. One time, I was on a plane and speaking with a woman and it came up that she was engaged. I congratulated her and asked when the wedding was. And she laughed and said she didn't know. They'd been engaged for over eight years. Or some people date for years and never get engaged. Or remain friends and never date because they're too afraid to rock the boat. We become comfortable with having things a certain way and fail to take a risk for something truly beautiful. The same can happen with our jobs. We're not really happy, but we'd rather feel safe, so we stay put. Sometimes we're like baby birds, and we need to be kicked out of the nest. Some men are like the rich young man who, when Jesus calls them, turns away sad and refuses to go because of his many possessions. Hopefully the Shivya series has helped you to know the deepest desires of your heart, the ones that God has placed there. But it's one thing to know the ways of the Lord, to hear his voice, and it's another to respond to that call, following the Lord's ways, saying, Fiat, let it be done to me according to your word. No one can make you respond to God's call. 
But these follow-up videos will encourage you to take action, such as contacting a vocations director or whatever the next step is for you.